Would you please stand and join us in worship this morning?
again. It's great to have you worshiping with us here this morning, both in person and online. Uh, if you would have a seat for just a couple of moments here as we uh, talk about some of the things going on here at New Hope this week. First of all, kids, if you are headed off to, ch to Children's Sunday School, Summer Sunday School, you can follow Mrs. Klingensmith out the side door there. And for those who are three or under, the nursery is Reopened. Aaron Over is up there this morning. So uh, if you have a kid that you that uh, falls in that age group that you'd like to take up to the nursery, you can go ahead and do that at this time as well. Uh, lots of things going on around here. Summerfest is got one more afternoon. Um, the band had a great time playing there yesterday. We've had lots of people stop by New Hope's booth and uh, lots of things given out. I I understand we're doing fairly well with the. Uh, with raising funds for the Hunger Center as well. So all of that is going great. Stop by the booth today if you happen to be at Summerfest. Say hi to those who are there. Uh, next week is Vacation Bible School. Not, this com not tomorrow, but the following Monday. Uh, that's, when I, that's what I meant by next week. 8th through the 12th. Thank you. Um, see Karen to provide some help for that. So... Uh, Let's see here. What else do I need to 
talk about today. Is there anything else? Not that I can think of. I think that's enough. Uh, if you're vis first time visiting with us, there are visitor packets available on the welcome table. Be sure to grab one of those, drop the communication card in the offering basket, which is conveniently located by the double doors in the back there, where you can also place your offering if you are so inclined to do so. Why don't you stand and join us as we continue worshiping here this morning? around you. Get Tim's attention. 
Hello. Hey. How is everybody? Hey, well, good morning again. Uh, Rent graciously offered to do the message this week because last week uh, we were so engrossed in getting Summerfest off the ground that uh, uh, it was uh, great to be able to devote ourselves to that. Lottie Crable uh, put together our float. Everyone said it was the best float in the parade. Unfortunately, this is the year that they're not giving prizes for it. So a, a few years ago, uh, we actually won a prize for our, uh, our float. We would have this year. Everyone said it was the best float. And, you know, as long as we think it was, who cares, right? Um, but it really was, it was probably the longest parade they've had at Summer, Summerfest in years. It was a great time. Uh, we've had a great time at the park. Thank you to all of those who have helped. If you'd like to uh, get the last uh, shift this afternoon, like between 1 and 4, uh, you can uh, just uh, either let me know or just come up to the park. And uh, 4 o'clock, we're going to pack up and go out of there and crash. That's how, we, how it works. Um, the, uh, the, the thing I wanted to, to share with you is, uh, as we said, we are going to... Um, uh, uh, give uh, we raised uh, money for the hunger center but it's also going to go to our community meal here because we do that in conjunction with the hunger center and uh, in that regard we are ra raffling off $250 in giant eagle gift cards so come on up and put a buck in there and uh, we will have a great experience so uh, anything else uh, uh, just uh, one small thing if anyone wants to help tomorrow we're going to kind of clear out the lower level because there's voting here on Tuesday we're trying a new thing and uh, providing space for the election board of elections and there's a few things we want to just get out of the way and make sure it's a clear space and we present well to the community so other than that uh, uh, let me uh, take some time and let's pray our way in and uh, welcome Rent to the pulpit. Heavenly Father, we are grateful uh, for you being here uh, because uh, it's your presence that makes this a, a, a real experience and not just a religious ritual. Uh, we never want that. We want the, the connection and the relationship with your son, Jesus Christ, that is so important that makes our life worthwhile, that makes everything we do uh, not just a, a regular thing, but it is part of our worship of you. We pray that the, our time at Summerfest is a worship, our time at BBS, uh, even as we prepare to welcome the community here, that that is our act of worship uh, for those things that we do in your name and for your purposes and that we do together in fellowship are the most important things in the world. Lord, we thank you for this time. We pray that uh, we'd be able to come to you and in this time of silence just lay before you the things that, uh, that worry us or trouble us or maybe the thanksgiving that we forgot to give. We take this time in silent prayer now. God, you are good. You welcome all of us, even the least of these, to the uh, to the table, to the to the place of fellowship, to the uh, to the great banquet of the Messiah. And Lord, because we are part of your kingdom and we, we are part of your uh, purpose in this world, we, the the church, as a living body of Christ, lift our voices to you as one, sharing together in the words of this prayer your Son taught us, as we say, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I was really excited when Dan said that him and Lottie were working on floats for Summerfest. So I showed up Saturday, uh, Friday afternoon with my big cup, big gulp cup with, filled with ice cream, and was really disappointed when there wasn't floats. It was a float. And it looked really cool, but I was really hoping for root beer and ice cream. But nonetheless, there's always hope, you know, making do one at home. But uh, such is my life. No. <laughs> We start off this morning with Psalm 86, verses 1 through 12. 
Hear me, Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and needy. Guard my life, for I am faithful to you. Save your servant who trusts in you. You are my God. Have mercy on me, for I call to you all day long. Bring joy to your servant, Lord, for I put my trust in you. You, Lord, are forgiving and good, abounding in love to all who call to you. Hear my prayer, Lord. Listen to my cry for mercy. When I am in distress, I call to you because you answer me. Among the gods, there is none like you, Lord. No deeds can compare with yours. All the nations you have made will come to worship before you, Lord. They will bring glory to your name. For you are great and do marvelous deeds. You alone are God. Teach me your way, Lord, that I may rely on your faithfulness. Give me an undivided heart that I may fear your name. I will praise you, Lord my God, with all my heart. I will glorify your name forever. Let us pray. Father, we come to you this morning just asking and seeking guidance on what we can do to, to, to further our, our lives for your cause. We just uh, ask that everything that was done this week out in the community at Summerfest uh, goes to be uh, part of a blessing for you, that the upcoming uh, VBS also plants seeds in the, the, the lives of the, the kids and maybe the adults that come and help. We just uh, ask that you continue to love us and guide us and uh, just... Be who you are for us. In son's name we pray. Amen. All right, I'm going to call on three of you to answer a question for me, but I'm going to give you the answer when I call on you. Tim, I'd like for you to say computers. There's going to be a quiz. Kevin, I'd like for you to say, no, Norm, I would like for you to say cars. When I ask you, I want you to say cars. And let's see, Holly, I want you to say phones. Okay, Tim, computers, Norm, cars, Holly, phones. All right, need you all to help me name three things that come to mind when you think of something that has drastically changed since its, in, in, since its invention. And I, used, and I had to give you the answers because it's all pre-programmed up here, and we would look like fools sitting here trying to waiting for Tim to figure out which one we're actually going with. So, Tim, give me something that has really changed. Computers, computers that's great. You know, computers have gone from these gigantic mega machines that take up floors upon floors of buildings. And that is, I mean, that's floors with an S, not just a little guy, you know, like I've seen a semi truck that has like a big hard drive on it that was not as smart as this cup of water up here, you know. <laughs> The Apollo rocket that sent Americans to the moon on July 29th, 1969, had a computer on board that wasn't as smart as the Texas Instrument Calculator that your kids use at school in math class. And now we have computers that can drive cars, they can calculate complex equations in milliseconds, they can launch missiles which land within inches of their targets. Computers control almost every single aspect of your life. When your computer dies in your car, you have a very expensive repair. Might as well just leave it on the side of the road and walk away. Your 50-inch flat screen TV is essentially a large computer monitor. And why do we need flat screen TVs that are smart? I don't need anyone knowing what I'm watching. You know, watching my WWE videos and Fail Army. I don't need someone in the government knowing what I'm watching. No. <laughs> Your pacemaker is probably hooked up to the internet so that the doctors can check in on you at any given time and shut it off if they don't like what they see. <laughs> this morning's message was composed on a Hewlett Packard computer while I looked up references and Bible scriptures on my Apple iPhone. Essentially, a pocket computer. Norm, think real hard about this one. Give me something that has changed drastically in the last many years. That is great. That, what a great answer. <laughs> Who here has ever had a car that you had to crank to start? Probably Norm. Probably Norm. <laughs> if you didn't go to Summerfest, nine, Norm has a 1930s Pierce Arrow. 
oh, I mean, that is cool. It's almost 100 years old. And uh, I'm surprised it didn't have a crank, actually, but... <laughs> but anyway, yeah, it's a, well, for the kids out there, you actually had to crank this thing to get it to go. Um, in, uh, some of the cars now don't even have keys to start them. You just have to be in the near vicinity for it to start up. The cars that first came out didn't have side mirrors or rear view mirrors. Those came along because of like the Indianapolis 500 and different types of car racing. Same with seat belts. They decided, you know, if you hit something, you fly through and out of the car, they might need something to keep you inside. But, uh, you know, car radios were not standard. In fact, the, the, the Pierce Arrow that Norm has has this cool little box on the steering column that's an AM radio, but you had to have a key to turn it on and off because Norm was telling me it was such a novelty that people tried to steal those things all the way back in the 30s. Who knew that theft was a thing in the 30s? <laughs> but now, you know, you, you can forget all about your... 10 CD Pioneer Disc Changer, your Sirius XM radio, your auxiliary connections for your iPhone. If you were lucky enough to have installed radio back in the day, it was AM radio in all of its crackling glory. You always knew when a storm was coming through. Some cars today have built-in cameras that surround the vehicle. Um, I've seen cars that you don't even have to look in the rear view mirror. You just look at the console and it tells you how to back up. Teslas are surrounded by cameras. So I don't even know why you have a, a windshield because everything comes up on an iPad type thing in the dash and it has computer animations of what's around you. So, I mean, it's like totally cool, really. Wow, I'm talking from like 1983 there for a moment. Totally cool, man. But uh, no, we, we have cars that are self-driving now, which terrify me, except for the fact that Domino's now has self-driving cars that will deliver your pizza to you. That's really cool. All right. So, yeah, cars have come a long ways. Holly, tell me something that might have changed a lot over the last few years. No. Think it's something. No. <laughs> Phones. No. Phones have come such a long ways. In fact, early phones, much like cars, some of them had a crank on them that you had to correct turn. You know, we are slaves to these stupid little things that we keep in our pockets. I know every time Maggie goes off, like PTSD, I'm like, oh my gosh, what's going on? You know, who's on fire at work? But uh, th these are the bane of our existences. It rings, we race to answer it. it it's a little known fact that the very first phone call received by Alexander Graham Bell was informing him that the insurance on his horse and buggy was about to expire. <laughs> True story, Abraham Lincoln said that. In the early days, you had a person at a switchboard that was physically connecting phone calls you know, across the, the town. I mean, the, the wires that, if you think of Lily Tomlin, if any of you remember Lily Tomlin, switching things, those cords that she used were not unlike these things that hook our microphones and guitars to the soundboard in the back. I already talked about the crank on the phone. I mean, it's weird. You just kind of, I don't know, even know how that worked, but I've seen people do it. But, you know, eventually phone lines were were you know strung across the land so like all the phones were connected easily connected um we had to contend with the the 10 foot long twisty phone cords that by the time you were done talking to someone was about 18 inches long you're you know you're making out with the wall because you couldn't walk any further you know and even with all the improvements that we've had with phones over the years at that time we still didn't know who was calling it was a crapshoot to wonder who was on that other line Debt collectors, ex-girlfriend, ex-boyfriend, work calling you into work, you know. But when uh, caller ID came around, we could be way more selective on who we answered the call. We could finally see who was calling. And, and now our phones do more than ever. With this stupid little box, we can make and answer calls. We can check our mail. We can listen to music, watch a movie, utilize the built-in GPS take a picture, read a book, chat with someone via text, order pizza, shop at Giant Eagle, and have someone from Giant Eagle bring it to your house. 
It's really cool. But we're slave to this thing. Sometimes your phone plays this cute little chime when your home security system lets you know that someone's at the front door. You can do that. Yet still, it plays our favorite ringtone. We are prone to answer it if we don't recognize that phone number. I want to show you this video. It's about 17 minutes long. No. <laughs> I have a question. Your cell phone rings and you don't recognize the number. What do you do? Ignore it. Ignore it. Don't answer it. Not me. I like life. <laughs> the other day, my cell phone rang 917. That's a New York number. I didn't know who it was. I picked it up anyway. I hit talk. I said, hello. Guy in the line goes, hey, Bruce, what's going on? My name's Jay, not Bruce. So I said, nothing much, man. What's going on with you? And he said, I'll tell you what's going on. I just got an email about the budget. It's supposed to be 15000 Now it's 10000 And I'd like to know what's up. I got excited in my chest. I grabbed the steering wheel. I was like, OK, focus. Your name is Bruce. There's a budget. It was 15000 Now it's 10000 No one's happy about it. That's all we know. That's all we know. So I just repeated back to him what he said to me. And I go, 10,000? It's supposed to be 15,000. He goes, yeah, I know. Well, I just got an email, and now it's 10. I go, listen, man, I don't know what to tell you. I've been on the road all day. I, you know, I haven't even seen it. And he goes, did you send this out? <laughs> I give him some attitude to Bruce. And I didn't like it. <laughs> I said, listen, man, the budget was 15,000. We had a couple extra expenditures. It went up to 162. I reworked it, got it down to 147. I had 300 to play with, so I called it 15 and I sent it out. And he goes, "Yeah, well, now it's 10, man." And I was like, "Oh my god, that worked. That worked." <laughs> Phase 1 complete. Phase 1 complete. Like now I'm in the door. I have a 401k. I was at the Christmas party, okay? <laughs> So he goes, did Larry OK this? I go, listen, man, I took the budget to Larry. Larry said it looked fine, but I knew his was on the line, so I ran it by Jennifer, just in case, just to double check. Jennifer said it looked good. I sent it out. He goes, yeah, well, now it's 10, man. And I realized, this guy has no idea what's going on over there. He hasn't talked to Larry. I know he hasn't talked to Bruce. He doesn't even recognize my voice. I know he didn't talk to Jennifer. I just made her up. So he goes, listen, man, what are we going to do about this? And I go, listen, I'm on the road right now. I haven't even seen the email. Why don't you give Larry a call, check in with him, see what he says, call me back. Just <laughs> praying he will, because that return phone call was going to be amazing. <laughs> and he goes, you know what? Why don't we wait till you get home, you check the email, you call Larry, you call me back. And I go, nah, nah, bro. Larry knows way more about this than I do. Give him a call, call me back. He goes, OK, hangs up the phone to which I explode with euphoria. <laughs> because there's a small business in New York that is crumbling to the ground. <laughs> over five grand, and nobody can find Jennifer. <laughs> They're looking. They're looking. I get home. I'm so excited. I take out my cell phone. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to save that guy's number. Give him a call in a couple days. Touch base. You know what I mean? Check in. <laughs> See where we're at, you know? So I save it in my phone under random guy. That's what he is. He's a random guy. Four or five days pass, I forget about it. Laying on my couch, watching the ball game, phone rings on the dining room table. I get up, watching the game, grab the phone, watching the game, look down, random guy. <laughs> but it's been a couple days, you know what I mean? So I'm like, random guy? Who's random guy? Like, who would even have random guy as their name that comes up? And then I was like, <gasps> random guy! <laughs> like, now I'm panicked, you know what I mean? People's lives have been affected. It's only five grand, but I don't know how big that company is. But I'm addicted to it. You know what I mean? I started this thing. I need to see it through. So I put my earbuds in, just to get a little distance, you know, just to get a little space. And I hit talk. Same guy goes, hey, Larry, what's going on? Yeah, now he's calling me Larry. He knows something's up, but I'm not about to back down. I go, nothing much, man. What's going on with you? And he goes, well, I got us on conference call with Janelle and Marie. And I was like, OK, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> this is why we play the game, you guys. This is why we play the game. So I go, welcome to the call, ladies, as if to say, welcome to the show. You know what I mean? Here we go. Marie takes the lead. She goes, hey, Larry, what time is it where you are? I live in LA. They're in New York. It's 5.30. So I go, 
It's 8.30. She goes, really, what's the weather like? And I was like, oh, weather's nice. Weather's nice. She goes, you know, this doesn't sound like Larry. And I go, oh, yeah? Who's it sound like? And a random guy chirps him from the back, and he goes, sounds like Bruce! Sounds like Bruce! <laughs> like he's going to blow this case wide open. <laughs> and I go, listen, guys, this isn't Larry, and it isn't Bruce. And Marie goes, who is this? <laughs> said, I'm just some guy who had nothing better to do than to mess with you guys. And Marie got pissed. She was not happy. She goes, you understand we're trying to run a business over here? And I was like, yeah, well, I got that from the budget. I just figured it was a business thing. <laughs> and she goes, what do you think? This is some kind of joke? And I was like, well, a little bit. Thought it's pretty funny. That's pretty funny. And she goes, let me ask you something. And I go, no, you let me ask you something. And she goes, what? And I go, where are we at with the budget? <laughs> I'm Jay Austin. Thank you, guys. Who has, ever, who has ever wanted to do that with a telemarketer? <laughs> so you just think, though, that if the comedian, his name was Jay Larson, if he hadn't answered the call from a random guy, this adventure never would have taken place. Who knows why he would have missed? Now, even with caller ID and screening the calls, we sometimes still have to take that chance answering a call from unknown numbers. What if... You applied for a new job, and, and you don't answer every call. More than likely, you could miss out on that very job opportunity. What if a relative is trying to get a hold of you to let you know about a distant family member, uh, maybe of their passing? You may go years without knowing about that important information. What if a long-lost friend from high school is suddenly in town and saw that in Facebook that you live here? If you didn't answer that call, you may have missed an important uh, time to rekindle that relationship. And what if you get a phone call and you look at your phone and it comes up as random guy? What if that is God calling you? We all have a calling in life. Some of us work in factories, some are chefs, some become teachers, some work in hospitals, but often, one's calling in life is something that he or she is really good at. But what if you ignore that phone call from God? First, we need to differentiate two words, purpose and calling. Our purpose is very general. Our purpose is the destination, the end result. For this morning's message, I was researching the Westminster Shorter Catechism which is a document containing 107 questions and answers, all of which sets the groundwork for our Calvinist theology. The very first question in the Westminster Catechism is, what is the chief purpose, or the, what is the chief end, or the purpose of man? And that answer is very simple. Man's chief end, or purpose, is to glorify God and to enjoy Him forever. And this answer is directly backed up in the scripture of the 86th Psalm by David that we read earlier. Hear me, Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and needy. Guard my life, for I am faithful to you. Save your servant who trusts in you. You are my God. Have mercy on me, Lord, for I call you all day long. Bring your joy, or bring joy to your servant, Lord, for I put my trust in you. You, Lord, are forgiving and good, abounding in love to all who call to you. Hear my prayer, Lord. Listen to my cry for mercy. When I am in stress, I call to you because you answer me. Among the gods, there is none like you. Lord, no deeds can compare with yours. All the nations you have made will come and worship before you, Lord. They will bring glory to your name. Teach me your way, Lord, that I may rely on your faithfulness. Give me an undivided heart, and that I may fear your name. I will praise you, Lord, my God, with all of my heart. I will glorify your name forever. And the one, uh, Psalm 144, Blessed is the people of whom this is true. Blessed is the people whose God is the Lord. 
to reiterate, and I'm going to reiterate this several times, the purpose of man is to glorify God. Think about this. Let's kind of go outside the box. All utensils in the kitchen serve the same purpose. And that purpose is to serve and or cook food. But how each utensil accomplishes that depends upon its design. Each is needed in its own way to complete the meal, but you cannot fix Thanksgiving dinner with only a spoon. Everything has its place. All of us in here this morning have that same purpose. Say it with me, to glorify God. Each of us goes about to fulfill that purpose which is our calling. Our, the way we fulfill the purpose is our calling. Without each one of our individual and unique gifts, our callings, we cannot complete our purpose. And what does it mean to answer the call of God? Answering the call means a person is following the instructions of God that God has given so that God may appear in their lives. The lives of the people which connect them all together, and the lives of the broad community to which they are attached. All of us at one time or another have thought, thought that we have received a word from God or a call from God. It may have been in a time of personal crisis or during a devotional period or maybe even during a Sunday morning worship service. Some of us struggle with that call from God. Some of us struggle with discerning the exact origin of this call, this overwhelming sense of direction. And we must admit, there are many instances where we know that, that when a call came in, we just ignored it, or we were not ready to receive it. Well, let's take a look at Samuel, a young boy who was studying under Eli. The young boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. One night, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was laying down in his usual place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, but Samuel was lying down in the house of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel. Samuel answered, I am here. And he ran to Eli and said, here I am, you called me. But Eli said, I, I did not call you. Go back and lie down. So he went and lay down. Again, the Lord called Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. My son, Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. And the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. A third time the Lord said, Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. Then Eli realized that the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, Go and lie down. And if he calls you, say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went away and lay down in his place. The Lord came and stood there, calling as, the, as he did the other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. And the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make the ears of everyone who hears about it tingle. At that time, I will carry out against Eli everything I spoke against his family from beginning to end. For I told him that I would judge his family forever because of the sin he knew about. His sons blasphemed God, and he failed to restrain them. Therefore I swore to the house of Eli, the guilt of Eli's house will never be atoned for the sacrifice or offering. Samuel lay down until morning, then opened the doors of the house of the Lord. He was afraid to tell Eli about the vision but Eli called him and said, Samuel, my son, here I am. What was it that he told you, Eli, at last? Do not hide it from me. May God deal with you 
be it ever so se severely, if you hide from me anything that he told you. So Samuel told him everything, hid nothing from him. And then Eli said, he is the Lord. Let him do what is good in his eyes. The Lord was with Samuel as he grew up, and he let none of Samuel's words fall to the ground. As all, and all of Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, recognized that Samuel was attested as a prophet of the Lord. The Lord continued to appear at Shiloh, and there he revealed himself to Samuel through his word. So, through this lesson, what three things did Samuel listen to, or did he learn? First of all, he learned who to listen to. Secondly, he learned how to listen. And thirdly, he learned what to do after listening. All of us can apply who, how, and what to our lives. When we prepare our heart, our calling can be better understood. I want to revisit that first line from Samuel. The boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. Now get this. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. How sad. God's word at this point was rarely received in those days because those who ought to have been the messengers of God's word were utterly incapable of even receiving it. Neither Eli nor his sons were qualified instruments by which God could reveal his will to the people. Even the high priest himself was not one whose spiritual nature was sufficiently awake to have him being capable of receiving the visions of God. And he who would reveal to others the word of the Lord must be able first to see and hear for himself. But Samuel was an, was an entirely different nature. His ear had been open to God's voice. His eyes were cleared to discern spiritual realities. And his will was so far in harmony with the will of God as to render him the right person through which the light of the word of God could be spread. His heart was prepared for a word from God. From his very early days, this boy had been found in daily attendance in the services of God's house. He had been prepared for a day when serving the Lord would be difficult. He learned total obedience, which would later be a mainstay of his life. His heart was prepared. Samuel was ready to answer the call. I ask you this morning something to think about. Is your heart prepared? Are you willing to answer the call when the caller ID says random guy or unknown? Are you willing to take that chance? We must even yearn to take this call. We must seek his face. When you are truly ready, God will speak to you. The Bible everywhere encourages us to approach God, to call upon his name, to seek his face. The person who seeks his face, the face of God, will hear the call of God in his soul. How many songs that we sing on Sunday mornings has almost those same words? I'm thinking um, like more love, more power is in there. Daniel states, do not be afraid, I'm sorry, stated in Daniel, do not be afraid, Daniel, since the first day that you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard, and I have come in response to them. Is your heart prepared to hear? If not, think back on this. Last week or the week before, Pastor Dan spoke about the rich man who asked Jesus what he must do to inherit eternal life. And Jesus said, in a nutshell, obey the commandments. And the rich man said, well, I, I've obeyed all the commandments, commandments since I was a kid. But Jesus said, go sell everything you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. And then, then come and follow me. But the man's heart was closed to Jesus' teaching, and he went away sad because he did not wish to give up his tremendous wealth. Make no mistake, God does not care about your age. 
Are you as old as Moses or as young as Samuel? God doesn't care. God has called you. Are you male? Are you female? It makes no difference, for God has called you. God has called you as he has called Moses, as he called Mary, as he called various people throughout the Bible. God calls you regardless of your race, your religious, of your talents, um, your, regardless of your poverty level, regardless of your wealth. God calls you regardless of your strengths, regardless, regardless of your weaknesses. God has called you because you are his sons and his daughters. The way God calls individuals is as varied as the individual, yet his call is always personal, and the end is always the same, to glorify him. Therefore, go and respond to God's call. Open up your hearts and allow God to enter as you leave here today. And every day, remember to pray the words of Samuel. Speak, Lord. For your servant is listening. Let us pray. Father, we just thank you for the words to remind us on what to do, especially the words that tell us to keep quiet and really listen to what you have to say. We just ask that, ask that you work in our lives and find better ways to glorify you. And uh, I asked this morning if there's people out there that haven't yet figured out their calling, that you work with them and call them in a way that they can only figure out. In your sense, let me pray. Amen. Excellent. Hey, hey uh, just a couple things. First, I want to mention today is Melissa's birthday, and I'm not sure which one it is, but I understand she's now eligible to vote, so that's a great, <laughs> great thing. Uh, also, by the way, Kenny, 
I purposely missed in the dunk tank because I just felt so bad for you. It was cold. So that's, uh, <laughs> that's my story. I'm sticking with it. Hey, it was a great time at Summerfest. Hope you can maybe pop by and just say hello today. Uh, you know, the best thing that we give out uh, is our relationships. And uh, it was great to see so many people just want to come up to the booth and just hang out with us. So many vacation Bible school kids who are now coming with their own kids and uh, you know, even uh, folks that, uh, that, that we have their kids in preschool coming by with their grandkids. So it's just a great uh, experience. And uh, God has blessed us to be able to do that, uh, continuing uh, in safety, because uh, we have had no issues. So let's just pray that Satan be bound, not to uh, make the, the end uh, not as good as the beginning. So uh, go in peace, and may God bless you as you go, and uh, pray that uh, every day for us is kind of a summer fest, that, uh, that we have the opportunity to, to meet uh, new and more people and share with them the, the love of Christ that's within us. God bless. I give glory, glory.